Kenny, we didn't get to talk properly about your Christmas. Um, how are you set? Not happened yet. Well, well, see, well, here's the thing, right? Last week you were in here and you were the most chill man I've ever seen. You came in, Owen was like, have you got the shopping done? And you were like, let's get a few vouchers, just get it done. Are you still at that state a week on? The vouchers now have gone to the gone by the wayside because there's no guarantee. We spoke about uh, uh, chapters yeah. being in some financial difficulty, like, and I, I can't take the, I can't take the gamble. And uh, buying a few vouchers presented to somebody, and suddenly, yeah, uh, them going to the wall, first thing in the in the new year. I feel a bit, I feel a bit guilty about that. So, I've had to go into the shops. I've had to go into the shops and take a few things off the off the rack. Unfortunately, I haven't done that for quite some time. Well, you you strike me as a man who will go to a shop and buy rather than going online to do it. Ah, oh, that wouldn't it wouldn't be an option to go. I mean, that wouldn't even be no. That wouldn't yeah. even be on the on the agenda going online for obvious for obvious reasons. I'll go into the shop, so I'll be honest uh, uh, with you. As long as I know, I need to have a clear Plan. picture. Clear, a little bit like uh, a little bit like the uh, the night before the game. The night before the game, back in the day, I'd be very conscious in terms of who I'd be playing against the 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 day after. So if I was playing kind of right back, say in the early days, I'd be coming against up whatever left wing, wherever it might be, mm. might have been gigs or one or uh, one or two others. I'm good. So I'll be very much focused in terms of, you know, those little pictures in your head, right, boom, boom, drop the shoulder, don't fall for that one, you know, he leans towards this and that and the other. So boom, boom. So rather than counting sheep, I'll be counting st- uh, step, <laughs> step Where, overs. Where's Ryan Giggs going to go? And body swears, wouldn't just be one uh, Giggs, it'd be, it'd be mm. most left-wingers, to be honest with you. So that'd be at those little pictures. So shopping, to be fair now, it'd be the same thing. I need to know exactly what I uh, was getting before I'd even think of stepping in, in into the shop. Because once you get into that, I could once you get into that habit, once you step over the threshold into a shop, for and you don't know what you're getting, you're you're dead like you know what Business I mean. The salesperson's coming. Yeah, you're like a you. kind of young gazelle in the fecky. You're taking a wrong turn. You've ended up your man that you've ended up this Serengeti like you know what I mean. You don't know where you're going. It's like those shop assistants, you know the equivalent of fact, you know pride the lines like stalking you. On the on the shop floor, you've no chance. You've nowhere to go. Look, so, know you've got a few quid. Like you're a former professional footballer. Like you can buy a few things. <laughs> well, I'd be I'd be very conscious, even in terms of the shop assistants. Bless them. I know they got a job to do, but that's the last thing. I mean, I just I just book a like, and one of them uh, comes over. Like you know, I'd be an easy sell. So again, it's just position yourself, even as you as you as you walk in the door. You're clocking for the shop assistants where they are, and you've literally got. You might as well put your clock on time or forty five seconds. I've got the graphs up off the rack. Get up to the cashier. And pay <laughs> this it. sounds like supermarket. Before and well, this is it. Before your rugby tackle by a shop. Before you know, you're heading out with about eight bags under your arm. So I have been in there. I've got a couple of bits. Not much. That was done, but that was done early. I'm gone. I'm finished. What's Christmas like in the Cunningham household then? Well, the unfla, the unfla now is at an age. He's um, mm. as a. You, if you under, if you He's understand what I'm saying, at some point, exactly. Yeah. Like, but he's not very demanded. I've got to be, I've got to be honest with you, and just as well, and just as well in his case. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what he was going to get in the supermarket suite? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah, so that, he's, uh, there's not an issue. There's not an issue in that respect. I'm not big on the. I must admit, not big on the, on the present thing. Will mm. you know? Never really have been. Like, you know, I don't mind dishing a few. Away. I'm not in terms of as bad you're not as a, that. You're not a Grinch, like. Yeah, but not but I'm not a big one for like re- receiving receiving presents now. You know, what I mean, I'd rather kind of uh, I'd rather not to be honest with you. I'll sling a few in the direction of a few other people, but no, that big obligation isn't there. Just, mm. You know, when you open it up and you know, I'm never gonna wear that. Oh boy, Jesus, that's not gonna see the light of day. And then there's the guilt. You know what I mean? You can't really pass it on. Can you really give it away? Oh, I've I've Within seen I've seen friends afterwards. do that this year. Uh, no. There was there was someone in Secret Santa. Uh, who yeah. passed on a bottle of plop they got last year onto someone else. <laughs> You're like, ah, lads. Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't need that pressure, do you? No. We don't need that pressure. And it is pressure, isn't it? You know, you know even thrown air, you don't, even if it's not being used, you feel as if oh, someone actually went and paid money for that and it's a bit of an obligation that you feel bad about yourself. Like, am I a bad person? Like, oh, they don't need a will, do you? Mm. Don't need the pressure, like... Right, are you, a lunch, are you a lunchtime dinner man or later in the day then? Oh, it's got to be later. Right, okay. Oh, you've got to be looking forward. You literally got, your stomach's got to be talking to you by the time you sit down and have your dinner. That's how I see it anyway. So now it'll be, uh, it's usually <coughs> four o'clock. I think yeah, four o'clock's enough, a good yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Anything, I don't get the old, uh, you know, anything between one and two o'clock. Oh, good luck. 
And then people are having breakfast, like having a fry up, like I never, get, nine I never get that. I like I heard as well about people who have like steak in the morning on Christmas. Like, why? You're going to have a massive meal no. later in the day. Stay clear of it. Bit of fruit, bit mm. of fruit in the morning. That'll be it. Maybe get out and have a bit of a bit of a run. Just re, you know, just get myself get myself prepared, and then whoosh, just the big way. No starter goes without saying. Oh right, straight to the mains. Ah, oh, late. You you carving the turkey yourself, or who does? I can get involved if if needed. <laughs> I've done it. I've done a couple of uh, Christmas dinners. Will right. Go on. What's on What's on the Kenny Christmas ah, dinner? Not, then? Nothing major. Nothing major. Well, there's a lot of pressure now. I've noticed the last kind of I'd say five or maybe five ten years. Maybe it's the um, all the culinary programs on the. See, everyone watches Gordon Ramsay online and stuff now as well, and it's like, oh, here's how he puts the goose fat onto what he's having right. with his Christmas dinner. Next thing, everyone's an expert. Yeah, so what sums it up for me, right, is the Brussels sprouts, right? Okay, crosses in the so bottom. Back, so back in, the, back in the day, Brussels sprouts weren't even an issue. We weren't even a talking point, were they? No. They were, it was, it was a given. It's tradition, yeah, yeah. but it was a given. There was no conversation about the, 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 the Brussels sprouts in terms of, like, preparation or anything. Your ma put them in the pot. So this is why we're... Mm. They, they got bunged into the pot. Maybe they got, like, chopped and diced a little... Maybe too. I, I wasn't involved in any of that. But they got put in the, the pot kettle of boiling water and literally you boil the arse out of them for about half an hour and that was it to soften Don't, them as much as you possibly can Don't, yeah. wasn't it if mm. in doubt leave them on for another 10 15, <laughs> 15 minutes if unsure yeah straight in a bowl on the table done and that was it whereas now it's like you you serve up Brussels sprouts I think to somebody nowadays in that fashion I mean, oh, they, that's they, un, that's unacceptable. They want them it? seasoned and they want something fancy happening around it. Oh, absolutely! So I arrived somewhere a few years ago and and I was thinking, what's going on here? It was like Brussels sprout bacon, like chopped little pieces, uh, fried bacon, kind of drizzled, very tasty. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but once you see that and you experience something like that, and people do, generally speaking, it's like a ripple effect. You know what I mean? Word word gets out. Did you copy start chattering home, about Brussels sprouts and? Yeah, it's you, you got to top that. You have to top that the following year. So now I'm hearing about yeah, get get your Brussels sprouts in the oven. You got to get your Brussels sprouts in the oven. Balsamic vinegar, a bit of oil, bish bash bosh, off you go. Ah, it's, it's it wants like a Pandora's box, isn't it? Well, see, I, I like I knew you were a big fan of the Bake Off, so I was thinking you're probably going to steal a few things along the way here. Like, are you going roasty potatoes, mash, bit of both? Um. No, ro- I think roasties are enough. Roasties are enough for me. Um, just the basics, really. Turkey, get the turkey right. And I haven't always got the turkey right. You, sp- you talked about that uh, that duck fat. That was a big thing a few years ago. I was hearing a lot of that. So I went for it. I think the big, what you don't do, and this mistake I've made, you don't trial and error on Christmas Day, do you? In, no. with, with these things. You can't bring a badly cooked turkey out to the table. See, there you go. So there you go. So I got too ex- I've got too excited previously, and the duck fat was a big thing. Mm. Lashed it on everything. Like the turkey was like fucking watering can. It was like watering can. It was turkey, potatoes, the whole lot. And it was too much. You know, it was too sickly thick, sweet. Do you know what I mean? All the fat, it was too much. It spoiled it. So I think you have to be careful. You have to kind of, you know, a week or two before maybe go through the whole process and just get it. I wouldn't be doing that myself, but yeah, a lot of pressure on the. Uh, I've sensed a bit of that on the person cooking. What about yourself? Have you been yeah. lured? Yeah, see, I I did a test run a few weeks ago because mates of <laughs> mates of mine, we we had a Christmas dinner because like we're probably not gonna be able to meet up around Christmas. We kind of saw it was coming, right? Right. So I did the turkey, and what it was actually basically copied what most of the top chefs do now, which is I made a baste which was made out of butter, a little bit of garlic, got it in under the skin of the turkey. That's about as much as I did. Kind of basted along as we were uh, cooking right. the turkey. It, like it's a very relaxing process. If you go every twenty minutes, have a look and see where the turkey's at. Put a bit of butter back on top. And you need a bit ha- of confidence that what you're doing. If you're, it's, not, it's not relaxing. If you're like, you know what I mean. Well, see, that's the thing. I wasn't too worried because right. it wasn't at least Christmas Day. Like I you don't strike me as the type will to get overly stressed about mm. most things. To be honest not with not you, really. Like, but I would have been devastated if it was Christmas Day and the turkey comes out wrong. It's like the one thing you had to do was cook the turkey because they were doing all the other bits and pieces yeah. on the dinner. So if it comes out nice, 
I tell you, you be... cover the bloody thing. Do you know that drawing? Do you cover it? Do you get the foil all over? Only, you, uh, only towards the end. Like you're meant to let it, it get it. Last half an hour. Of that yeah. that's definitely there's a bit of that's not now wives. No, no, no. Let, let it get that. a bit brown before that though, because like there's nothing worse than an anemic looking turkey coming out if you put the foil on. Do you early. dress it? Do you get the strips? Uh, the rashes all over it. And, uh, you, uh, Didn't quite go that far. To me, no. now, that that might be a 2022 plan to try and get a bit of bacon. Because <laughs> uh, again, I was looking at Gordon Ramsay doing this right, and so what he does is he chops the bacon up afterwards and he makes his gravy and stuff from that kind of run off and from the bacon it looked oh, fabulous class, it? yeah but like oh. he has all the time to do it I have that kind of time I was happy the turkey came out and didn't kill anyone that was good enough for me and nice there is something about visually how it looks though on the table before you took it and you're right you mm. speak about the, the colour of the turkey when it's really roasted up the skin of it and it's presented on the table and even like those those Brussels sprouts like with the little pieces of bacon or whatever you do which are carrots or mm. however you you know what I mean just visually how it looks that kind of colour coordination isn't it See, looks well even before you tuck in it's nice just to assess it isn't it on yeah, the table yeah, before you savour it a bit before it comes in. out it's like it's a special day we're having a special <laughs> meal see look I'm a bit like you I was raised on nice simple Christmas dinners along the way functional as opposed yeah. to fancy and slowly but surely I'm adding just a little bit each time that I cook it because um, well like I was you know used to going to the parents uh, generally for dinner in recent yeah. years and like they take care of most of it like you usually fall in half hung over from the school meet up on Christmas Eve you just poke it up and you enjoy the Christmas dinner now I've started to do a bit myself you're trying to learn how to like you know, carve the turkey properly and whatever else as well first time I carved it, it made an absolute ball yeah, it's a bit of a skill. The old carving of the turkey, right? Not that easy, can get messy. Thing to do. That can get messy, can't it? Yeah, yeah. If you're not yeah. careful, and get away from you. Eventually, like you and learn, it can set in a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and like if you have a table of people sitting in front of you, and you're carving bits of turkey that are going everywhere, and the yeah. place not going to look too appetising. Again, you've ruined their Christmas day. So yeah, there is a slight amount of pressure now. Now, would you be a turkey sandwich man later in the in the evening? Because I've never had a turkey sandwich in my life. Really? Yeah. So that's me. I'm pretty much done now. Do I'd you buy just enough turkey for dinner then? Oh no! Generally, it's a three-day turkey. Okay. So it's the, and funny enough, I enjoy the turkey Stephen's Day the second day more than Christmas Day. Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Cold turkey, but the cold turkey, cold stuffing, and the gravy on that for me. That why is that then? Don't know. What do you think I, that is? I reckon because it's just kind of had a bit different? had a bit of time to rest since you've cooked it the day before. And I think you just about have the hunger for a bit more turkey at that point. Like we used that to, al is. we always did turkey sandwiches like Christmas Day yeah. evening. Like when you go to watch a film or something in the evening, it's like just before you go to bed, you have a few after eights or whatever and right. a turkey sandwich. Oh yeah, I'm much after eights all day. day yeah, no, I've never gone into the turkey sandwich because four o'clock e, five o'clock, always a dessert, nice little, mm. although not the traditional. All of that muck, all of that Christmas. Go on, what's pudding. muck then? That Christmas that, pudding and ah, stuff. that Christmas pudding. That's just muck. Like that's that's not it. It's not even. I don't. That even doesn't even constitute dessert. Mm. Uh, to me, like uh, see, Tristan's cooking good in that some thing ways. for about four hours, and uh, I've had to do that for other people. Like you know what I mean? Really, is it worth it? Is it? I don't know. Well, like well, one of my neighbours is industrial in their creation of the puddings. So I think around the summer they start doing Christmas puddings and start boiling five or six at a time. Raisins and currants, though. Yeah. Raisins and currants all stacked together, not, like not for me. Oh, not at all. I'll have a bit, a bit of trifle going out. Apple pie, apple crumble, obviously. You know, you never turn your nose up at a, at a bit of that and a bit of custard. So that's me done. That's me pretty much done. Now uh, the after eight, I'll get a, I'll get a visit. Uh, later in the evening, etc., etc., etc. But that'll yeah. be it. That's, now, do that's you me. sit down and watch the soaps, or do you watch a film then? At night? I wouldn't have watched soaps now for a yeah. long time. For 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 a long time, I don't watch a lot of telly now. Uh, pay, full stop. Now, will so I might have a little flick through now, Christmas Eve to see if there's maybe there's, there'll be something there. I've been watching a little bit of late. I've stumbled upon a bit of the old classic comedies, uh, Royal Family, mm. and a couple of things like that. Faulty Towers. I mean they. Amazing. And Royal Family has an amazing Christmas special as well. Uh, Royal Family is the writing and that. Uh, Caroline, bless her, what was her uh, surname? The writer who obviously uh, starred in it, uh, yeah. the actress. She passed away as well. Yeah, yeah she yeah. did. But when you when you look at that now, the kind of the script, the dialogue between those, uh, the family in that sitting room, it's amazing. Talk about kind of, we're talking about nostalgia in terms of football and kind mm. of going back. I mean that for households growing up, uh, certainly my uh, my generation. I mean that kind of definitely strikes a chord on the armchair in the in the house, the the telly, all the tack, the party hats. You know what I mean? And mm. and the dialogue between them. That's like. 
probably appreciate it now more in terms of how good it was uh, the script because that's like that's still as sharp now for me as it was when that was that was put out 15 20 years ago some of the other stuff which i really enjoy maybe waned a little bit but but certainly that royal family of one or two others the writing and that it pretty amazing yeah like even though I've seen a few of these a million times I'll always watch say the Father Ted Christmas special when it's on right inevitably it'll be on Channel 4 it'll be on RT2 at some point over the next few days I can probably quote it almost word for word but yeah. I still watch it every year I think like a really good Christmas special is hard to do uh, but a lot of those kind of British sitcoms do it really really well yeah they do the Carolina Hearn was it I think yeah, uh, uh, yeah amazing and the gran the, the nan wasn't it mm. before she lo- like passed wonderful character all of them like you know what I mean uh, yeah so probably them to be honest with you I'll stumble on them but then they're like younger kids and stuff yeah it's a little bit it's not I don't think it's a case of everybody there's not too many of those shows now is there everybody piles on the sofa bang and everybody's engrossed is that I don't know do you watch a lot of telly is there anything out there nowadays I don't know I'm not sure it's a different time Kenny as well because like back then these were on like terrestrial TV yeah. and people had only a few channels so like it became genuinely like a big occasion to watch one of these big series yeah, of course, yeah. now like there's just so much choice like and you're getting hit with recommendations all the time it's like ah oh, you should be watching Succession watch Dope Sick watch right. whatever like this I think there's a really good time for TV like there's really good stuff on right now but it's hard to keep up with everything like if it wasn't for the pandemic I wouldn't watch half the stuff that people have been recommending over the last year are you talking like streaming are you talking yeah, Netflix yeah. and stuff like that talking Netflix, Disney Plus, Amazon all those you need a million accounts now to watch everything but is there, is there, is there any on that that you think family you know what it's like family kids of a certain age is there, is there, is there enough on Netflix life where it encompasses the whole family everybody's going to get a bit of enjoyment everybody's going to buy into you know some of the Netflix stuff yeah. I mean, some of it's very good but some of it can be like a little bit borderline stuff in terms of you know whatever like you know I what I mean a, I think it's aimed at a different audience like I think a lot of the big TV series now are going after like a much older audience who are going to pay for the streaming service so like the shows are aimed at a slightly more mature that kind of yeah. like royal family kind of you know a much wider interest yeah. and as you said where the whole family can sit down and watch something that's kind of dying off a little bit and like look, I'm not going to watch it, but something like Mrs. Brown's Boys is probably trying to appeal to a wider audience. Like, it's a right. it's a dying art form now. Yeah, it's not easy, right, to strike that tone. Yeah, yeah. No, I might do that. I'll have a little, uh, I'll have a little flick through. I'll tell you what I've stumbled upon of late, and it's probably showing mm. me age. Fair enough, I'll, I'll hold my hand up. There's a programme on the BBC, right, The Repair Shop. Right. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it, yeah. I have, admittedly, I haven't watched it, so sell it to get, me. Get on it, Will. Right. Get on it it's a very very simple uh, formula if it's even a formula at all like where people uh, this big warehouse in the in the countryside somewhere in uh, in England and there's these specialist people trades people in here they look most of them look maybe retired maybe not they're of a certain age but very skilled at what they do like welders uh, carpenters some of, in terms of putting old clocks together and old little toys wind up toys uh, painting restorers and all this type of thing so it's a big like big big shed open end of day shed and basically people just come through they arrive basically with their family heirlooms predominantly that's, mm. the, that's the big catch I think they come in and they've got a story to tell this is uh, this is an item from my granny's house she gave it to me ma when she was a young girl she gave it to me it's fallen to disrepute can you guys I'd get love it back? To, can you do anything with it and these things are in absolute bits and they they hand them over to these people and you see the process in terms of trying to put these things back together and it is phenomenal the skill of these people in terms of what they do taking these things apart and putting them together and then presenting them back to the people. Now, there's a bit of an emotional thing there as well. They present them back. It's going to be the hook, like my you grandmother see, used to have this. Yeah, so yeah. a little bit corny, a little bit cheesy, I can understand, but very, you really kind of buy into it and invest in it. But the skill set from these people in terms of what they do, and then they, when they present it back, you know what I mean? It's kind of a story in itself, like a very kind of a simple thing, like, and you might say very nostalgic, no big super superstars, just kind of ordinary people will kind of say ordinary stories but not really when they get into the bones of it like and they give the history what this thing actually represents this air, air, heirloom and stuff like I think we can all kind of buy into that a little bit so it's a funny no, type of thing you stumble upon you kind of hang around mm. and all of a sudden whoosh you're into it and that's like it's kind of half far in the 
in the afternoon. That's like the dead zone. I don't. May, maybe it is, is it? Ah, if you're a student, you love these. Like you watch Houses yeah. Under the Hammer and this kind right? of stuff on BBC, kind of early in the the mid morning and into the afternoon. And like I have to admit, these were like a guilty pleasure of mine. Like I like that one where people go to get their uh, goods evaluated as well. Again, usually there's a corny story to it. So, oh, this was in the house and I found it, and I need the money because my kid needs an operation, and how much right. is it worth? And then they turn around and say, Well, actually, this is you know a classic piece from the Egyptian age. It's worth two hundred thousand. Yeah. Right, like gotcha. I kind of I kind of love that kind of crack. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. yeah, but I'd be different out to that. Anything with kind of that monetary, I'd always be a little bit uh, suspicious. And now that one, like, this is an old clock. No, I really don't want to get rid of it. Oh, no, I'd, I'd rather, no, the last what thing I want to do is much. hand this to you for two and a half grand. <laughs> but if you want to give me three, oh, I'll, I'll consider it. Yeah, for the reason. So I'm always a little bit uh, sept- uh, um, skeptical of that. But the thing that I'm talking about, the, the financial thing, these people aren't coming here, restore this. I want to put on eBay the following day. They want to keep it. This is like on a much ho- <laughs> higher level, means an awful lot more. So, yeah, so anyway, that's my little pitch. The re- repair shop could destroy me credibility going forward, but who cares? Both of our credibilities who are cares gone this well. morning. Don't worry about it, right?